Hey, this is Aron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. What follows is a tutorial on creating a simple glowing text wipe-on. Originally, I decided not to bother with this tutorial because I've always thought of this effect as kind of a one-trick pony. And that pony's been doing its thing for a long while now. But then I turned on the TV and there it was. So I figured, hey, why not? And then, as I was preparing my materials for the tutorial, I realized that there's a bunch more that you can do with this pony if you're willing to be a little creative. So, that said, let's take a look at the example I just showed you and then talk about ways to enhance it. So here I have the text One Trick Pony. I'm going to select the layer in the timeline and then create a mask the same size as my text by double clicking on the rectangular mask tool. Next, I'm going to select the mask and hit Control T so that I can transform it. Then I'll scale it down so it only covers about a letter and a half. That, yeah, that's good. I'll hit enter to get out of the transform bounding box. Next, with the layer still selected, I'll hit F to reveal the mask feather property. I'm going to turn off the feather properties constrain proportion switch here in the timeline and then set the X feathering to 35. This creates a nice faded edge at both sides of the mask. Next, making sure that the mask is selected, I'll hit control T again to bring up the free transform bounding box and then using my arrow keys I'll move the mask over to the left past the edge of the text so that I can no longer see any of the text. Hit enter to exit the bounding box. Next, making sure that the layer is still selected I'll hit M to reveal the mask shape property and set a keyframe to mark the current mask shape. Next I'll move down to about three seconds in the timeline. With the mask selected in the timeline, I'm going to hit Control T again, and then move the mask down to the left past the other side of the text. Again, I should see nothing on the screen when I'm done. Okay, let's do a quick RAM preview to see how that looks. As you can see, a small portion of the text is revealed and then hidden over the course of three seconds. Okay, back to work. Let's duplicate the text layer by hitting Control D. Make sure that you have the layer selected and not the mask or it will just duplicate the mask. Next, select the bottom layer and hit M to reveal its mask shape property if it's not already visible. Making sure that your time marker is on the second mask shape keyframe and with the mask selected, hit Control T to open the bounding box. Next, grab hold of the left side of the bounding box and drag it back towards the left until you can see all of the text then hit enter to exit the bounding box. The goal here is to have the mask reveal our complete text rather than just a small portion of it. Do a quick RAM preview and you'll see that the text is being fully revealed over three seconds. Next, set the top layers transfer or blending mode to add. As you can see, it now appears that the front of the text is lighter than the rest. The Add Blending mode combines the color values of layers and their underlying colors. The result is that the color in the overlapped area is lighter than the originals. Now let's have a little fun. I'm going to zoom in here a bit just so you can see things a little bit better. Okay. In the timeline, select the top layer and then choose Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. In the Effects panel, let's set the blur dimensions pull down to Vertical and then let's turn up the blurriness to about 65 or so. As you can see, it blurs the letters vertically with no horizontal blur at all. Next, let's add the glow effect to this. With the top layer still selected, choose Effect, Stylize, Glow. Let's just set the glow threshold down as low as we can so that all the blurred parts get the glow added to it. At this point, if you do a quick RAM preview, you'll see that our text now wipes on with a bit of a cool, or maybe not so cool, elongated glow effect. You've probably seen this all over the place. Not that exciting, but still being used, so maybe it can help you. Anyway, I started playing around with other effects to see what would happen. By applying the transform effect to the top layer, I was able to create this simple magnification effect. Nothing stupendous, but it still might be useful. By playing with the Psychor Effects Light Burst effect and animating the center property to follow the mask shape, I was able to get this effect. Again, not earth shattering, but it looks pretty cool. Then, by playing with the Psychor effect called Mr. Mercury, I was able to get this. It kind of reminds me of a mouthwash commercial. Finally, I tried combining a few of the effects and playing with some of the parameters, and I got this, which I think looks pretty cool. The thing about it is that while this effect is fairly simple, 
If you're working in motion graphics, sooner or later you're going to be asked to wipe text onto a screen, and having a few extra tricks certainly wouldn't hurt. Don't forget, you can get the files for this and other podcasts at www.creativecow.net forward slash AEPodcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.